Crazy Steve with me here, Impact Wrestling star. We're going to be talking a little bit about Impact Wrestling's return to Louisville coming up. Uh, Impact Overdrive and Kentucky Chaos uh, starting November 18th. Uh, first and foremost, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Impact Overdrive, uh, that's the first of two nights of Impact Wrestling action. Um, seems like Impact's sort of making a home in Louisville. Uh, you're actually familiar with the area. I know in addition to uh, competing on the tapings there in the past couple months, uh, you know, you did some work for OVW, but uh, I mean, how do you feel going back there? Like uh, just as far as Impact having a hold in Louisville, making it a little bit more of a, a destination See, everything is kind of new since the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So the doors are opening up and obviously like we were about a year in where we were able to travel and kind of, we have like a regular loop now um, and that we are adding cities to, but Louisville being one of those places is always awesome. One, it's not, uh, it's not a flight for me. <laughs> so from a travel perspective, which is a good majority of what we do, um, I enjoy that because I can travel by car. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, like you said, I'm familiar with Louisville and like not only, you know, OBW, but impact as well as various independent wrestling organizations around the area as well. So, uh, like the crowds in Louisville are always fantastic. They're always loud and ruckus. And like, and so that obviously as any performer would tell you is, uh, it holds a special place in their heart or at least as a destination that they look forward to in the calendar year. Uh, as I mentioned, you competed at a couple of the shows that uh, took place earlier this year. Uh, you got to face off with Steve Macklin in one match, and then you were also involved in uh, X Division number one, X Division title number one contenders match. Uh, I, X Division, uh, it's always been about no limits. Um, is that something you want to stay invested in? Uh, so there, I will say there's like a, a core group of fan base that is definitely wants me in that X division hunt or to see me with the X division title. And it's never really been a goal of mine, despite, I mean, I guess you can prejudge that based off of my size, that that would be a thing, but it really isn't, um, something that if the opportunity was to come my way, I would take it with, you know, um, with the best intentions in mind, but that is not something that motivates me as far as the professional wrestler is concerned. I, I would be just as happy, if not more happy with just the storyline that carries on from week to week to week that builds from pay-per-view to pay-per-view with a single character. That's what some, that would do something for me. The idea of me having the X division title, I think is intriguing and I I don't know where I would go with it, but it, I would be excited to have that opportunity just as much as anything else, I suppose. I think the cool part about it was, you know, it kind of came as a surprise, but it also wasn't advertised as like, okay, look, you know, he's an X division guy. Like you've competed all up and down the card singles. You've competed in tag team matches. So, you know, it, it was kind of like, that no limits, I don't want to call it a rule, but you know, that, that kind of allows you and other wrestlers to kind of come and go as you please, where you're not pigeonholed into being a certain type of wrestler. So, I mean, did that at least, come I, up, does that agree with you? I would assume. Yeah, I would say yes. I also think too, I was the whole, the exhibition title it would be different in the sense of when you think of the X division title matches in 2022, there's a certain of athleticism that the audience preconceived notion is already going to be involved. Would you say, you know what I mean? Like with your Mike Bailey's, your Ace Austin's, your Chris Bay's, um, 
Laredo Kid, Trey Miguel, all these guys. These guys are all far more athletic than I am for various reasons, right? They're younger. They have 20-20 vision. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, so I, I think if I was to hold it, it would be a different style or pace. I'm not saying I'm not athletic. Obviously, my work speaks for itself. But uh, there's a reason why I don't do a lot of the things that those guys do because they just they do it better. Mm-hmm. And I, there's no way I can compete with that style. Now that, again, that's not to say that, you know, I wouldn't take the opportunity and make it my own thing. And it could be just as successful as, you know, any other X, X division champion. Um, but those are like my initial thoughts going into a scenario like that is that the audience is definitely going to, I mean, there is a preconceived notion when it comes to these X division matches and rightfully so. Um, we've been giving it to the audience for years, but I have never really put myself in that category because those, to me, those guys are, there's a lot more athleticism and, and stuff that goes into that match. Whereas I'm, I'm more of a story based moments kind of performer. I would like to, at least that's my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. I can do X division style. It's not my favorite style. You just mentioned, uh, 2020 vision. I, I don't think too many people, know that you're you're legally blind and i know uh you're you know you just shared how character and storylines are very important to you but is there a way that you know you feel like you can still share your story and you know inspire others without sort of dropping the veil too much on television or like has social media helped with that where you can sort of put a you know a gap between the two um, I don't, <clears throat> pardon, uh, I'm not sure if social media has helped in that regard, but like I, the fact that, and this is, these aren't my words. These, these are Tommy Dreamer's words. These are Luke Gallo's words. This is Eric Young's words. The fact that my story has not been told professional wrestling television is insane. And <laughs> And just based off the fact, yeah, yes, you know, I, I'm legally blind. Um, and I didn't, that, again, like that is news to some people because um, it's not something that I advertised when I first started wrestling. I mean, I wanted to be known as a, as, a, as a professional wrestler. The fact that I can't see, that's just, it comes with the territory, but that's not what I wanted the focus to be on. Um, so I never really... I never really put it out there for people. Mm-hmm. If you knew, you knew. If you didn't, you didn't. And then it wasn't until recently where I was able, like not able to, but where I was comfortable enough. And I had, you know, felt like I've carved my niche in pro wrestling to the point where, okay, I can, I have no problem advertising it now. And it's because I have a following and because I have an audience that doesn't see me as just that they see me as the wrestler first. And then the eyesight thing comes second. It's interesting. Yes, for sure. But it's not, who I am as a person or a performer. Yeah. Uh, so we were introduced, this was I'm trying to think at least five years ago, it was at WrestleCade one weekend. And the, the person that introduced us, they were just like, Hey, Hey, this is Steve. I was like, Oh, nice to meet you, Steve. And you said, you mm-hmm. know, like we were just, you know, small talk. And then walking away, I was like, wait, was that? And he's like, yeah, it's crazy. Steve from impact. And it was like, none of, and I didn't know about, the the site at that point but i was just like oh wow that's crazy like no pun intended about crazy but i was like wow that's crazy like you know just you know met a wrestler whatever but then after a while it was like i i forget who said it but it was like oh wow like i you know kind of like how all those other guys you said those were those words like it's it's nuts how you know the story's not out there and it's not your goal but you know, it's certainly inspiring to see how much you have achieved, you know, as a professional I, wrestler. I want to tell the story. The story definitely deserves to be told. And it's, it's, it's made for professional wrestling, especially nowadays. Professional wrestling loves to take real life stories and show you like, you know, the grind and what it took to get there um, because it's real. It's real and people can relate to that. Um, and so I do, I would love to tell the story because there's a lot more that goes into it that 
is that, that goes beyond the eyesight stuff. Um, but I would love to tell it. I don't know how to do that yet. Um, and, and it's not like the people who I work for aren't aware. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they know, mm -hmm. yeah. everybody knows. So I just, I don't know where the opportunity comes or when it comes, but it is something or, or how it even comes out, whether it's, you know, a, 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 a documentary or some sort of other form of media that I put out there. I would like to get it out there at some point within my career. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously that's, you know, real life. Uh, television is a different medium. You are part of decay. Two of the matches at overdrive involve some of your friends. Uh, one of them is uh, the, the knockouts world tag team championship, the death dolls, Rosemary, uh, Rosemary and Taya, are defending against Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. Um, you join you joined the company with the Menagerie. That that was sort of your first introduction. But Decay has really, uh, you know, they've resonated with Impact Wrestling. Uh, like, where do you sort of draw inspiration for from? Uh, for the dark realm and that sort of character, because it's obviously evolved. Like I said, the menagerie was this circus, uh, sort of, you know, lighthearted feel. Whereas this is a little more Gothic, a little more, a different direction. So like, where do you guys balance each other out where it doesn't come across as like cliche and overwhelming and. Um, yeah, well, I mean the, the, like the decay stuff, that all stems from like what I was doing on the independence, but now we have a bigger budget and we have, you know, a lot like shinier toys to play with, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where a lot of that comes from. The, the menagerie was given to me. That was, you know, that was the idea of one of the, one of the writers there or one of the production guys there. Um, and so that I was, I just fit within that role very easily. Because again, it was something I was doing for 12 years up to that point on the independence. Granted, I wasn't like a clown, but I was easily like, it's not like I never wore clown makeup on the independence or anything. That is it was stuff that I was already doing. Mm -hmm. And I can be lighthearted or I can be really dark and creepy. I can do both. Um, they wanted lighthearted first. So that's what I gave them. And then when I had the opportunity to give something else, when that kind of ran its course, I said, well, there's another thing that I was kind of doing on the independence that, you know, that we could make really cool. And I've always wanted to work with Abyss. We just needed a way from a television perspective for our characters to interact. And so I presented them with this idea of a tag team between him and I, and they came back with me with, well, we would like a female within the group. And so I happened to know uh, Rosemary from the independent scene and from, you know, having been good friends with her and <clears throat> having seen her break in from day one. And so I presented them with her and, you know, the rest is kind of history from there. But as far as like, it, it's grown and it's evolved. Um, and a lot of that is, you know, uh, the, that's that would never happen if it wasn't for the, the fan base, you know, if it wasn't for our fans. If they didn't come, if they weren't attached to the characters, get -go, then we wouldn't be where we are today. That's plain and simple, cut and dry, as you know, as plain as it can be. Um, so we have them to thank for that, and we, as a group, are collectively passionate about what we're doing still to this day. And I think that's why it doesn't, or at least that's our hopes. And that's our intentions of what we put into it. So that it doesn't come across as monotonous and same old, same old. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was just reading a recent interview you did. And uh, I believe you said Sin Bodhi was the one that gave you your name. Uh, did you like, have you uh, learned in recent years that there was actually a crazy Steve on a Nickelodeon show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know him. Okay, I did through him, man. Because I, <laughs> I, I never no, watched it. I, 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 to be 
Armchair, I came on for before he did. That show was in production in 2004, and I started in 2003. So <laughs> I'm the original Crazy Steve as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've never seen the show, but I know that person comes up when I get Googled. Um, and I've had fans come up to me and ask if that if there was any inspiration drawn from that show. And it, it was before that show ever existed. So, no, that is the answer. <laughs> I, that that that's kind of why why it it stuck with me because I you know you you go do a Google search and you're like oh did you mean this crazy Steve with one Z and I was like no I mean the wrestler nope, <laughs> so, <two Z's. laughs> uh, I'll I'll get you out on this one uh, I usually do a watch list feature is there a match that you've either wrestled or I'll open it up to just a decay match that uh, you feel you've shown what you can do as a complete wrestler or maybe just one that's been memorable for a different reason. One that you would tell fans like, Hey, this is, you know, some of my work that I'm really proud of. Just because I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, I would say, try, go out and try and find our, which would have been like the, this was just, this is probably would have been the last match I had before I left. And the first time in 2017, which would have been Decay versus LAX, um, Santana and Ortiz. So, and I say that one because I mean, just like uh, based on the fact that at the time in 2017, I was leaving and I didn't know what was to come. So there was, I definitely went into that match wanting to give everything that I possibly could to, you know, to the fans, to Impact Wrestling as a whole. To Santana and Ortiz, uh, we were their we were their first like leap into that realm of like television wrestling, and we were their first big feud. Um, and I, I don't know if you've noticed, but they've done pretty well for themselves <laughs> up to this point. So, uh, and they're two human beings that I generally like um, and respect as you know as friends and as professional wrestlers. So, uh, I would say try and go out of your way and try and find that one um, for those reasons. All right. I like it. Uh, if I can't find it on YouTube, I'm sure it's uploaded on Impact Insiders uh, or Impact Plus. Uh, it definitely is. That's why you loyal listeners should get both Impact Insiders and Impact Plus. It's on there for sure. There you go. And Impact Overdrive will be on Friday, November 18th. You can check that out too. Crazy Steve, thanks for your time today. Thank you so much.